So yeah, that able to change on that moment. So I'm gonna be Now as you can see I've got the movie them 10 dog. So anyway, let's get it sim. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you're gonna be watching this video. I've got a 2011 Range Rover Revoke that is having just a tiny little bit of surgery. I'm elaborating there by a little bit. Quite a lot of surgery. Engine's failed. I'm gonna start it up and let you have a little listen. Right, well you can probably hear it doesn't sound the best. Let me just give it a bit of a rev and I'll put my camera over the engine for you. Oh, it's not the best, is it? Right, let's work some magic. Now, how we're going to be tackling this car is taking the engine out from underneath. But to take it out from underneath, we need to take the subframe off. To take a subframe off, we need to take the steering column off. But what we do, get your seatbelt, put it through the centre of the steering wheel, remove our 10mm on the pinch bolt at the bottom there, and that steering column should, you watch it won't come off now, that should just pop off like so and the reason why I put the seatbelt here I get asked all the time why do I do it just take the key out because at some point I'm going to be starting this car without the steering uh, subframe on and that now that steering wheel cannot be turned and damage a clock ring simple but yet effective right well let's get involved uh, we need to remove this scuttle panel uh, unplug the ECU disconnect the battery and we need to make a start on disconnecting a few little bits and bobs I've now removed the battery, the scuttle panel, unplugged all the ECU, the battery live and negative. Uh, that's pretty much all done for that corner. We're just gonna remove this little mount in a minute. <coughs> I've got the air conditioning, which is degassing. And as we're removing the stuff, we're gonna be putting it all in neat little piles and all the nuts and bolts all together. So we know where everything's going. Right, well, I've got the vehicle up in the air. We've had to, well, if, if you know your Land Rovers, these bottom ball joint pinch bolts do not come off. So what I've had to do is drop the knuckle off the strut, hang the caliper up out of the way to get the shafts out. Now all we're going to do now, um, I've disconnected the steering rack, electronic, just up by the gearbox there. And we should be able to just get this gear, uh, gearbox. Can't get me words out. Anyway, just get the subframe off. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Well, we have now got all the subframe off. As you can see, lots of bits and bobs all over the place, the exhaust on the back air subframe, all the plastics. And we've got now that engine just hanging in there, prop shafts disconnected. Put that back in there, all the coolant hoses, air con lines. Now, all we've got to do is drop it down on the floor and get the engine out. Now, as you can see, minimal mess. We don't like mess, do we? Right let's get this flipping engine out we made sure that everything is disconnected we've got no pipes no nothing connected and then we can get this engine drop down it's got a lovely little chain on it a little pair of more grips there just to keep the chain level to stop it from doing this sort of thing but yeah let's get it out and there we have it which with a little bit of magic that engine is now out okay beautifully that was perfectly hung Perfect. Anyway, lots of room there now. And there is a brand new second hand one. Excuse the mess there, we've been absolutely busy, you can tell by the boxes. But yeah, we've got lots of stuff to swap over now. Whether it's just gas axe stuff and cut wires and but yeah. Right. I've done the easiest bit. The hardest part now is swapping everything off that engine onto that engine and putting that back in. Well, we're doing a little bit of progress now. Uh, we've got the brand new second hand engine on the crane. Now I've removed all the wiring loom. I never trust the wiring loom from the scrapyard because you don't know whether they've been cut, pulled, stretched, never risk it. But one thing I am going to be checking on this second hand engine is the glow plugs. Now I have just set up a little bit of a rigger rooney. We just turn this on like so. Now what's, what I'm going to do is test these glow plugs. Now if they're a good glow plug, that light's going to light up like that. And the plug is right underneath here. Got one, two, three, four. To start off with, we've got two failed glow plugs. I've got to take all that manifold off now and put some new glow plugs in it. The only thing with second-hand engines, isn't it? 
Right, well, I didn't have to take the manifold off. I was just being a little bit dramatic, should I say. Uh, fuel filter housing off down the side there. Long extension for the other two. And there they are. Right, I've pretty much finished with that engine. Now that can go to one side. Or we can get this in. Get this on the jack. Right, well, I've got the old one now that is in the crane. We've removed all the wiring loom, the transfer box, the alternator, starter motor, the loom, various pipes. Oh, I'll tell you what. We'll get it all back together, I'm sure. Um, I just need to remove now this gearbox and the clutch, and that's it, I think, yeah. Right, well, I've had a little bit of a tidy up. We've got the brand new second-hand engine now, which is in the crane. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is do the heaviest part, I think. Uh, I'm gonna get the clutch and the gearbox, the transfer box, back on this engine. Right, and there you have it. That is the gearbox and the transfer box back on the engine. Now I've gone ahead, because it's a second hand engine and we don't know the history of it, we have put a brand new timing belt kit on it and a water pump. And of course, my preferred every time is Shaffler. Right, let's get all these timing covers put back on. And that is the timing cover and that all back on. I put the alternator, air conditioning pump. These are the original components off the vehicle. Now, we put the starter motor on. Now we've got the job of routing all this wiring loom back to it. Shouldn't take too long. And it has been the weekend, so the chances are I'm gonna route it the wrong way, but we'll work it out. We'll work it out. There we have it with a little bit of a fiddle. That wiring loom is all back in and everything is plugged in. We've got a couple of plugs up there, but that's for the uh, oxygen sensors and exhaust gas temperature sensors and stuff. Now, we all know how much of a pain that that oil filter is when it's in the vehicle. We're gonna be chucking a brand new oil filter in it while we've got it out. Right, I am now happy enough to say that I can get this engine back in that chassis. Um, won't be too long, a little bit of a wriggle and a poke -a and it will be bolted back in. Right, let's get cracking. Right, well we are getting somewhere. We've got the engine back in, uh, I've plugged all the wiring harness back up to the ECU, put some fresh coolant in it, fuel lines are on, uh, put the master plug back into the fuse box there and also uh, the glow plug relay wire that goes down in the wheel arch there. I'm just going to connect the clutch up, gear cables, put the battery box in. I'm not worried about the subframe and stuff like that for now. I just want to get this engine running and then we can worry about that later because that's just nuts and bolts. But yeah. Right, well I think I am now in a position that I can get on the key and give it a big start up. I'll put the air box on just loosely because I've got a lot of tidying up. I just want to get this engine running before anything. Before we do, while we're winding it over, we are going to disconnect the injectors so it doesn't start and we can get that oil pressure built up. Hang on. Right, we have now put the injectors back in, coupled them back up. Now remember, I've got no exhaust on this, so the chances are it's probably going to give it a bit of a smoke a for a little while. Right, get on the key, Stevie, and give it a run a Rooney. See if it starts. Oh, oh. Beautiful! Right, well I have got a few pipes disconnected of one thing or another, but it is up and running. Right, well now I'm happy that the vehicle is up and running and the engine's running nice and smoothly. Um, we've got to come underneath now and make sure that we've got no leaks anywhere. It's nice and dry. It's only been running for about three or four minutes. Um, I've got the dry shafts to put in and also Put the subframe back on. Now I'm not going to bore you putting all that back on, so I'm just going to carry on and do my thing. Right, well I put all the subframe on, dry shaft back in the hubs, everything is now is back together. Now I've got the vehicle running and what we're going to be doing is concentrating on some live data. We're going to leave it ticking over while I'm putting all these plastic trims. Everybody thinks, oh the engine's the hardest part doing these big jobs. It's not. It's all the plastics. That's, I think, personally, from my point of view, that is the most time consuming job when you're doing stuff like this. With all the plastic trims and stuff like that, it's horrendous. Anyway, I best cl uh, carry on, carry on. And there we have it, that car now is all back on the floor, wheels tightened up, all the plastic's clean and it is running. Perfect. I've also recharged the air conditioning as well. So it's nice and cold in there. We've got good coolant, fresh coolant. Brand new oil and filter, timing belt water pump done. You've seen what I've done to this vehicle. But anyway, I'm gonna 
get off the ramp now and we're going to take her for a little bit of a test drive well we're out with the bat in the car and it is driving absolutely beautifully we've got no warning lights temperature gauge is halfway not moving fans are cutting in we've got no warning lights whatsoever i'm happy let's get back to the workshop well it's safe to say that that was a successful engine replacement in a range rover evoke yeah we'll go back to the workshop now i haven't got there's not much fuel in the vehicle but i'm going to give it a good good test drive later on uh, probably go home in it and um, have to put some fuel in it as you can see we've got no lights on and everything is happy as it should be yeah hope you've enjoyed the video please like and subscribe let's get it sent